Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Life Rails. Phil Smy here. Today we're diving into the exciting new features and improvements in the latest Rails release candidate, Rails 7.2 Release Candidate 1. There's a lot to cover, from better production defaults to new development tools, so let's get started. So Rails 7.2 is approaching its final release. And on August 6, 2024, that was yesterday for me, they announced the first release candidate. And if no issues are reported, we're going to see the final release on Friday, August 9th. This update brings a host of new features and improvements that will make your development process even smoother. So let's take a look at some. First up, this idea of better production defaults. And this version comes with several enhancements aimed at optimizing performance and efficiency in production environments. Starting with YJIT, Ruby's just-in-time compiler. Uh, YJIT is now enabled by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. And I don't think we have a Rails installed. Um, let's clear this gem, install Rails pre-release. And this is installing the pre-release. And then we should be able to see, there we go, let's do a Rails minus V, and we've got release candidate one. So let's go back here. And let's make a Rails new app 72 underscore one. I think we're going to make quite a few of these. The first performance. Uh, better production default is the YJIT Rails just-in-time compiler. And I believe if we look at application RB, and nope, it's not going to be there. Where is it? Hold. Hurry. So we can turn it off if we want and it is on by default so we can turn off rails application config yjit let's say we could put that here or whatever um to turn that off and um but you of course would want to leave it on now that yjt is enabled by default and is if you're running ruby 3.3 or newer uh, this change can provide significant performance improvements for Rails applications offering 15 to 25% latency improvements. Uh, this means your application will run faster and more efficiently right out of the box. Another key change is the uh, adjustment to the default number of threads in Puma Rails web server. The default has been changed from 5 to 3, and this reduces the time Ruby spends waiting for the global VM lock. Uh, thereby improving latency again and uh, request response time. So additionally, the Docker file, where are you? There we are. The Docker file um, generated by Rails now includes gem alloc, does it? There it is, gem alloc. Uh, so a memory allocator that optimizes memory usage. This is especially useful for applications with high memory demands, ensuring more efficient memory allocations. Now, the other thing that's really interesting is development containers. And let's take a look at development containers. With Rails 7.2, it adds the ability to generate a development container configuration for your application make it easier to set up a full feature development environment quickly. And this configuration includes a .dev container folder, does it? Let's go up one. And let's 
make a new Rails app there. Dev container. And we simply do dash dash dev container. I'm going to do a whole video about dev containers uh, later on. And there you can see it right there. It creates the dev container. And we're going to have to wait again for this to kind of install. Okay, so let's go into that dev container. And let's get this one up and ring. And there it is, dev container. So it's got a Docker compose file already, which is pretty cool. Everything's set up because this is the way I normally run anyway. So it's pretty neat that this is happening automatically. Got a dev container JSON, which sets everything up. You can see it's got Selenium. Very nice. And a Docker file with your Ruby version and all that stuff like that. That's pretty neat. Now, the other thing that they've done is they've changed the way the guides look. So let's see if we can find an example of that. And yeah. So we can see some before afters that, yeah, they've kind of updated the look of the guides. Gone, gone is this kind of <laughs> old style uh, overuse of colors and so on. And now we've got this new cleaner design that you can see here already in the new guides. There's some additional improvements, which is kind of cool. And let's just uh, put up a screen here and talk about those. So we've got um, the browser version guard is now added by default, which is pretty interesting. Ruby 3.1 is the new minimum version required to run Rails. That's very interesting, isn't it? So if you are one of those people, you know, I did a, a poll a little while ago where I talked about what version of Rails you're on. And if you're one of those people who said you weren't on a Rails 3.1, well, you're going to have to change if you want to use the new Rails. Uh, we've got a default uh, PWA, Progressive Web Application File. So uh, it's much easier to build progressive web apps. This Omokase, uh, which uh, it's another uh, Japanese word swiped by the Ruby environment. Um, so that's Rubo cops are included in the default, which is good. So we now have a kind of a consistent code style Rubo cop involved. Yeah. Uh, included. Sorry. The, uh, GitHub continuous integration workflow is added by default. Uh, Breakman, which I did a whole video about, which you can go and check out, uh, over here. Breakman, um, is now included by default. Jobs are prevented from being scheduled within transactions, which is very interesting, reducing potential errors. And per, per transaction commit and rollback callbacks have been introduced, which is also very interesting. Uh, um, slightly lower level control over the transactions. And um, some Puma dev configuration suggestions there. So, oops, there we go. Um, certainly Rails 7.2 RC1, at least, is packed with features uh, that seem to be there to enhance our performance, our development convenience, and our security. I really like that. And they're asking us to test it, but they're going to release it on August 9th, which is in two days anyway. You can download RC2, as I showed you there, um, just to uh, give you a, another hint. Where am I? CD, dev, rails, videos, uh, make there, fill new, CD, Still new, and what's the Ruby version I've got? So we can gem install Rails minus minus pre, and that will get you 7.2 release candidate one. This is a kind of a release that I've been looking forward to. You know, this is on the path to Rails 8, which is going to be coming very soon, perhaps even this year. So Hold on to your horses. 
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification to stay updated with all the latest news and Rails tutorials. See you next time on Real Life Rails.